Now, in other news, Israel's fashion industry is in for an overhaul as the fur trade is no longer welcome in the Jewish state, with very few exceptions. Environmental Protection Minister Gila Gamliel announcing the new ban on Sunday, explaining that, quote, exploiting the skin and fur of wild animals for fashion is immoral, and that, quote, the fur industry kills hundreds of millions of animals worldwide and involves indescribable cruelty and suffering. So what are the exceptions? Well, the new law, which will be under the supervision of the Nature and Parks Authority, will only permit fur trading for scientific research, religious purposes, and education. Maximum penalties for violating the law being a fine of 75,000 shekels and or a year in prison. And joining us now with more on the new face of fashion in Israel is Ynet News Editor Yulia Kara. Yulia, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Right now, Yulia, fur has been effectively banned from Israel. What does that mean for the fashion industry here? Well, for the fashion industry, Israel's fashion industry has never a, has never used fur um, to the extent that the fashion industries overseas have because mm. of the weather restrictions where fur was unnecessary and because of the wide, wide ranging opposition from the public. According to the latest poll, um, around 86% of Israelis are against um, killing animals for fur. So fur was never a, a big, a big player in the fashion wow. industry, and it, it was worth around only one million dollars um, ten years ago, back in 2010. And to this day, it, it still it ha has never generated um, large amounts of money or, or played a big role in the fashion Absolutely. world in Israel. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, as far as, as far as what I understand, my limited knowledge of the fashion industry, I know that a million dollars is small potatoes. Um, so, you know, what what alternatives in Israel for fur are popular? or available, rather? Well, the synthetic alternatives today, the synthetic fur is almost indistinguishable from, from real fur. So um, almost all the brands from, from designers like Chanel and Prada and Gucci to high street brands like Zara and H&M do, um, do synthetic furs, which, which are almost identical to the real fur. So whoever, whoever feels like they absolutely have to wear fur in Israel in this heat. They can still find the alternative. All right. Um, so, so again, though, you know, how are fashion companies, both in Israel and maybe international companies, reacting to this news? Well, so far there haven't been any reaction internationally. And what's interesting is that um, uh, is uh, Israeli official officials haven't really addressed what it's going to mean for the trade with China because mm -hmm. the vast majority of uh, apparel. Uh, Israel uh, apparel in Israel comes from China, including fur, both synthetic and real. So uh, the officials haven't really addressed what does it mean with regards to trade, because it would hurt trade to a certain degree. Um, so, uh, so yeah, in that extent, we we are yet to hear what uh, what the trade repercussions internationally are going to be. And in general, based off the statistics that you started rattling off earlier. It sounds like in Israel, most Israelis in the public and, and clothing companies, for that matter, are, are not phased or even upset by this, yeah? Right. Yeah, absolutely. The only ones that, that were in opposition are, are the, the religious sector, which have been exempt from this, so, I yeah. see. Yes, of course, religious observance. All right, well, Yulia, thank you so much for shedding light on this. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.